drill of the week, we're going to be working on pistol presentations, and I'm going to go ahead and break it down and discuss in detail why I do what I do, because I think some people get a little bit confused about it, but uh, first things first, I, just like with the rifle, I use a high compressed ready. I know some people feel like this is a high compressed ready, or, uh, or this is a high ready, or whatever. Yes, those are, were technically high ready, but with you know, more experience in CQB from Global War on Terror, this has been more recognized as the high ready. And so, basically, this allows you to be a lot quicker on target, be able to keep it nice and compressed, and it works at close range, long range, just like with the rifle. And you'll see a lot of units actually using this now because it actually is more advantageous than doing a low ready, which came from or a high ready like this because that more came from safety Nazis that were just preparing for the fight against more paper targets. God's honest truth. But anyways, um, this high ready right here, this compressed high ready allows me to superimpose my muzzle onto the target or into my environment and have it ready. So when I actually have a target, I can just thrust directly out and engage them. Just like with your draw, you basically thrust direct out and you don't have to go up. It's, you're not you're not bowling your gun your gun up and superimposing your sight onto your target. So this allows uh, me to superimpose it, have it nice and compressed and controlled and then I extend out and I deal with the threat. So the next detail there is superimposing your sight picture. I know some people talk about having a focal shift from focusing on your target identification of your target and then performing a focal shift once you come out. No, 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 no. Number one, once you actually identify a threat when it's actually a threat, not just a paper target, the idea of performing a focal shift is absolutely irresponsible because it's your job to neutralize that threat if you actually feel that that is a necessity. However, once that threat is neutralized, whether it's on their own cognition and their own decision, or because you put effective amounts of freedom seeds into them, you have to stop firing. That requires you to know what the threat is doing. That requires you to focus on that threat's activities. You cannot do that if you're focusing on your sights. You can't. So, it is on you to superimpose your sights onto them. So basically, make sure you're focusing on the target, and superimposing your sights. So, that is the way you're basically going to do it. You can only focus on one thing at a time, right? Focus on the more important thing that you're gonna naturally do anyway. So practice that, superimposing your sights and getting comfortable with what your sight picture is going to look like superimposed. So, some sights will bleed out, like the three dot sights might bleed out, so you need to know this. You might actually have to change your sights if your eyes can't really do that, but Prepare for how your body's actually going to react, but anyways, safety manipulations is the last thing. So as you're going out, take your safety off, as you're coming in, switch it back on. And you can practice this as a drill on its own, where you're basically switching your safety off and uh, going to the wall uh, of the trigger and going back in. If you're not too familiar, get, just get used to that. That would be a presentation drill on its own. But since I don't have a safety on here, I can just work on trigger work, right? So as I'm going out, superimposing my sight onto my threat, and there we go. So that's basically the drill. It's quite simple. Now let's go ahead and uh, talk about timing. So I have my dry fire part timer set up for one second. This is something to work up to if you're uh, kind of you know, working on superimposing your sights, you might want to go like two seconds, like snail's pace, working on that transition and, and coordinating peripherally, getting your sights on. So I have mine just set for one second. That's where I'm at. And I have three seconds to reset my pistol. That gives me just enough time. So that does give me a bit of stress in order to test myself. So the important thing to remember is when you're conducting dry fire practice, you want to make sure that you're not uh, you're not forcing yourself beyond your capability to uh, do the drill properly. So that's something that I found. That's why I do it in 25 uh, rep sets instead of 100 reps altogether because my muscles will fatigue 
and I'm not quite at that point where I have the strength to just continue. I don't have the muscle endurance in order to just do this over and over again at that kind of rate. So anyways, let me go ahead and start here and I got three seconds. I'll get my target. Okay, so that was a very long 25 reps. So anyways, in between your sets, if you're going to do sets, uh, you know, start out with five to get comfortable with that pattern and stressing yourself out and seeing how long you can go in and out. And that'll help you develop a good procedural memory. And once you work up to it, you know, narrow your times down, try to put yourself under stress, but still be able to correctly uh, go through the procedure and develop that good procedural memory, i.e. muscle memory for some of you people. But um, basically, in between, do stretches for your hands and stuff, and this will help you over time, and it'll help your uh, forearms. Give yourself, you know, five minutes in between sets. Uh, give yourself time to stretch, you know, hydrate, take care of yourself, basically, because these hands, if you don't take care of them, you know, lotion, you know, olive oil can actually help with... Uh, moisturizing your hands and stuff and giving them a nice soak in some hot water and stuff like that and lotioning them will really help that and because calluses can actually cause more pain than just moisturizing your hands it's not a girly thing but anyways that's a little bit of, pl of a plug on uh, taking care of yourself right there at the end but let me know what you think in the comments below about this uh, drill and I really encourage you to continue practicing but get out through the range as much as you can and actually test this with you know practical you know drills or courses of fire so anyways test yourself often practice often and you guys have a good one